If you work in a biochemistry lab for years, when it comes to gel electrophoresis, you see a lot. So here's how to avoid some of the most common problems when running a paint gel. First stop, make sure that if you're using a precast gel, so one of these pre-made ones, you remove the adhesive strip. This strip is there so that the liquid doesn't leak out while the gel is in the package. But liquid needs to get through the gel when you're running it in order for it to run. And so you need to make sure that you remove that tape. Um, so this could be on the side with some of the Novex gels or on the bottom with some of these BioRad gels. And remember to remove that tape. Sometimes if, you, if you're coming from making your own, then you're not expecting the tape. So remember there's tape and remove it. Another really common problem is a leaking gasket. So basically this gasket is this thing um, that you're going to put your gels or your buffer dams. Um, so these are just like kind of placeholders. So you get a tight seal so that you get a plate seal. There's this lip on here that you need to make sure that your gel, the lip of the gel plate or the lip of the buffer dam is right against that. So what I like to do is I like to stick this in, push it down and then push it up until it's right against that line. Then I come and I do the same thing on the other side. So I take this indent, make the indent towards here, push it up until it's right at that line. You don't want it to be overlapping that ledge. You want it to be right snugly against that ledge hold tight, snap together the sides, and then, and only then, stick it into your gel box. Now, in order to make sure it's really tightly snug, start by pouring the buffer into this inner chamber that you've just made by tightening this gasket. You want the liquid to stay in there. If the liquid starts leaking out, then redo it. Now, once you've filled that up, check to make sure it's not leaking. Now you need to make sure that you fill the outer, the outer buffer well but not the entire gel. You just need to make sure that you're covering the bottom, but do make sure that it's at least getting above kind of like this, where this wire line is so that you have sufficient buffer. If you don't have sufficient buffer in either the inner or the outer chamber, you're gonna get um, either the gel, you'll get an, like an error or it's just gonna run really, really weird. So if you see it running weird, that might be check the levels of the buffer in here. And if it had gone down, then what you can do is you can either take the gel out and re redo the, um, snugness or you can take some extra buffer and add it in but it's better to avoid the buffer leakage in the first place by making sure you have a tightly snug um, cassette. If you're using one of the Novex gel boxes they don't have that ledge so what you want to do in this case is make sure that you're snug against the bottom on both sides. Hold it tightly snug against that bottom and now what you're going to do is you're going to stick it in and then this wedge goes in here hold it tight when you're wedging it down and then once it's in snap it and now this should be tight again fill this inner chamber first make sure it's not leaking if it's not leaking then go ahead and fill the outer chamber one of the other problems is you might have actually too much sample and so if you overload your sample lanes this can cause your gel to run really weird so typically um it's gonna vary but if you have um like a pure protein you don't want to do more than like two micrograms for like some sort of lysate maybe like 25 micrograms of total protein would be your maximum if you have more then you're going to get like warping of the gel run if you're running four gels in one of these tetra boxes um make sure that when you have the gel box what you might need to do is you need to ensure that these metal things are actually going to come into contact with the, the with the um like the screws on top of here and so you might need to like pull these wires down to make sure that they contact and also make sure you have things in the right orientation and that when you're setting these up you have one of the gels that has the um the the like sticky things these you always want to have at least one of these but if you have a second box now you want that one to just have this flat screw top and then you want to bend these so that they actually make contact when you start the gel make sure that you see bubbles in both that front and the back and make sure that your gels your electrodes are always in the right direction thankfully they color code this so it makes it really easy so you go red to red and black to black um, but if you force it, you can make it um, go the other way. Um, if you're, so if it feels like it's not going on right, you're probably doing something wrong. Make sure that you have everything set up okay. Um, and then your run should hopefully go okay too. So hope that helps you avoid some of the most common problems. Remember to remove that tape, to um, tighten your gasket tightly, to make sure there's enough buffer, to um, make sure that you have the electrodes are touching your power box. Watch for those bubbles. Make sure all goes good um, and don't load too much. And now, happy running gels.